Hello, you core. Miles, returning from Cowboy Land, here with my long overdue Aquaforce deck profile. When's the next support's coming in a week. Yep. Is it? No. Okay, I good. I, I don't have the money for it. Your your first car is Blue Bubble Draco Kid. Uh, you run this because um, it's a dragon and it's got that like kind of charming like chibi mascot look instead of that Twink Eric. Uh, your big fat unit is Four Glory Maelstrom. Uh, this is like the the you know the new one since August eighth. Um, so its skill is act once per turn, counterblast one, and until end of the turn, your opponent cannot intercept, and they can only call one card from their hand to Guardian Circle for each battle. Um, so basically, you know, they can only, they can PG, of course, um, but they can't intercept, and they can only guard with one card, uh, every time you make an attack. Then, if you have a Maelstrom in soul, uh, all of your front row units gain 10k, so it makes it really good, uh, combo that with some of the cards in this deck and if your opponent doesn't have a heal trigger then they die so you definitely want to run you definitely want to run four of these the great part is that um okay what sucks about this deck is that like you basically don't do anything on your uh first ride unless you like ride regular maelstrom and you have the stuff to uh work out its skill but if you ride one glory and then you get a second glory you can ride that it's not like an actual you need to ride the og maelstrom which is, feels like something Bushra would do to this deck. Speaking of, you run four Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom. Um, its skill is pretty inconsequential. Uh, you'll typically just ride it and then kind of swing. Like, I almost never call a field just because I want to have that full field for when I use Glory. But uh, its first skill is you counter blast one and all units in your front row gain 3k for the turn. Um... And then its other skill is uh, when your rearguard attack hits the vanguard for the third or fourth battle, you ditch two cards and you restamp this card. Miles, can you not fart in the middle of the deck? I didn't. I didn't fart. I didn't fart. That's the smell of the um, children burning in my basement. I lived in the second floor of an apartment building. See, so you mean the children burning in the first floor? No, no, I would never hurt them. They're really sweet, and they're they're you know, mom got me the last job. Basement. I uh, I have conversations with my dead grandmother, who's paying for my college fund. So for for you want to run obviously four of both maelstroms just so you can see the maelstrom for the soul, and then you want to run two Riptide Dragon. Uh, it can only attack on the fourth battle of the turn or more, and when it does attack, it gains twenty k. So that makes it thirty two. If it's on an Excel circle, it'll be forty two, and using maelstrom skill, it's fifty two. So if your opponent's at five damage and they don't have a PG, uh, that's game. But it's also a card with no Vanguard skill. Uh, what happens matter. when you ride it? You don't. <laughs> but you, you don't ride it. But if you... But if you have All right, okay. moving on to grade twos. We run four Algos. Love this card. Um, on Vanguard, is its skill is... Yes, on Vanguard, its skill is <laughs> when it attacks for the second battle of the turn or more, you counter bust one, soul bust one, and stand one of your rear guards. Uh, we're going to go into a fun little combo later. It's not much of a combo. Um... And its second there? skill is, uh, and its second skill is when it attacks. If it's the first battle of that turn, counter bus one and restand. So that's pretty integral to how this deck works out because you want to hit that fourth, you want to get that fourth battle for Riptide. Uh, and then we have a returning favorite, Title Assault. You run four of that. Uh, its skill is once per turn when it attacks, you so bless one and stand it. Um, if it's the second battle of the turn or more, it gets minus five k. So if it's the first battle, it doesn't lose any power. Uh, so you want to, you know, be careful about how you work that into your strategy because yes, you can use it for the, any other battle except the first, but it's going to be, you know, exceptionally weaker. And then we run four of this new guy, Coral Soul, a uh, great card. Um, during the battle it attacked, if the, if four or more of your other units are in rest, so Vanguard counts, which is actually super helpful, this unit gets 15k, so that makes it a 24, 34, 44, uh, using Glory on an Excel marker. Um, and at the end of your turn, if the total number of attacks you made this turn is four or more, you shove it into the soul and draw. So it's a really good counter to control decks, and it helps Aqua Force a lot just because you need the draw power. Sorry, I didn't move that. Uh, grade ones, we got this, uh, bro, Stormrider Nikolaus. When it's placed on Vanguard or Rearguard, you look at the top seven cards of your deck for Algos, add it to hand, and whether you get it or not, this card gains 3k. So, 11k beater, you know, 21 on an Excel marker, um, 
and it helps you get out your ideal grade two ride. Also, during your preceding turns, it just helps you find units to attack with. Uh, it only searches the one specific Algos, which why wouldn't it? There's only one kind of Algos, but I like Algos and want more, so. You, you want to say that if you see Algos, it all goes well? Hey, I hope your mom disowns you and leaves you to die in the uh, uh, homeless center in downtown LA. Too late! <laughs> We run three wheel assaults. Um, pretty okay card. Its first skill is at the end of the battle it boosts. Uh, choose two of your rear guards and you uh, exchange positions. So that can help in certain cases if you want to like add a different rear guard to a column where it can be boosted, or if you want to you know throw a card that normally couldn't do anything to an excel circle so that maybe it can do something. But I almost never am in a scenario where that skill comes in handy. Uh, what its second skill is, is something that I actually run it for, is that uh, when rode upon, you get to counterblast one and draw a card, then you must call a card from hand. So during your grade two ride, there's a combo you do where you actually do just have to call a card. So like, if you ride on top of this, you're gonna call anyway, so um, it really doesn't hurt you. Uh, I've considered dropping it down to two, um, just because its main skill is a ride skill, so like, it's are you fucking... We're, re we're recording. Do you, do you know who I am? Can you go close the window? Oh, never mind. We're fine. Um, the windows are closed, Miles. Not that one. Uh oh. So, basically, uh, it just... I'm worried that sometimes, you know, I'll draw into it later in the game and, like, it'll just be a brick. But, hey, it's a booster, if anything. And you can just put it on an Excel marker and use Don't Glory Skill to make it 28. His name's Labrie, but on Discord it's Labrick. Yeah, I like that. Um, because this is Aqua Force and it's an offensive deck, you do not run Theo. That card's not helpful. You run Influent Dagger, a card that will actually be able to attack. Its skill is whenever your unit attacks a Vanguard, if it's the third battle of that turn or more, this unit gets 3k. So, if this unit attacks the Vanguard and it's the third battle or more, it also gains 3k. If you put it on Excel Marker, that makes it 17. If you make two attacks, that makes it 23, thus hitting Force Numbers. Why would you not run this card? It can also apply to boosting, not that you boost in this deck. Are you, like, calling someone out specifically? I'm calling out literally every Aqua Force player I've seen so far. No one runs Influent Dagger. Really? At Jungle, someone actually complimented me, or commented on the fact that I run Influent. They were like, I was surprised that you run Influent. That card's really aggressive, and I'm like... It's supposed to well, be an aggressive deck, isn't it? Yeah! Like, I get... Okay, let me, let me say this. Let me say this. Here. Let me... Uh, I'm gonna say this. Running Theo isn't a terrible idea. Let's just put that there so there's nothing, Col nothing Here, no, screen. we can flex. Okay. Running Theo isn't a terrible idea. It, its skill activates on both boosting and attacking, and it gives 8k. So in tandem with Glory, it's not a bad idea because your opponent's probably going to want to take one or two of those attacks. So if you could work it around, um, you know... Theo hitting, uh, then you can make the next attack even harder to guard. Not a bad idea. But, like, I've played games where I've swung with enough on a glory turn to get this card to plus 15k, and it's on an Excel, on an Excel circle. So that makes it 42. If you give 8k to some other unit, you're swinging for, like, 27, plus glory skill. All this is in the assumption of glory skill. Um... But, like, Theo in the long run just doesn't give as much power as Influent gains power, so there's just no point to run it. It feels very underwhelming uh, compared to your alternative. Um, speaking of other cards I hardly use, I run two Light Signals Penguin Soldier. Two um, Anakin Penguin, as Ellen likes to call it. Yeah, that's actually funny. Uh, so its first skill is that you get to you can rest it and pick a unit in the same column as this unit and give it 5k. Um, so like not bad, you know. It can help it, it it can 100% help with a uh, tidal assault if you want to use like Algos and tidal assault in the same turn, but you don't want tidal assault to lose power. Um, it uh, you know just the fact that it gives 5k can change drop numbers and especially in this deck when your goal is to you know build like one or two attacks that your opponent for sure cannot guard off of glory's skill 
um, giving the 5k can help that. But the main reason I run is just because it's other skills when your uh, other unit attacks. If it's the fourth battle of that turn, you can retire this unit and counter charge. Because you do sort of do a lot of counter blasting, especially early game. Um, and everything in this, and not everything, but a lot of stuff in this deck is counter blast one. So, like, you want to make sure that you can renew that. So, you know, run two, it's not a big deal. Um, it's also a cute penguin. Yeah, it is. You know, it doesn't hurt. Uh, so, that's all for the main stuff. Then I will go into my trigger lineup. Um, I run seven crits. Uh, okay, I know you're thinking, Miles, why aren't you running fronts? And the reason is because Glory itself is effectively a front trigger. Uh, and there were a ton of games when I first built this deck where Glory's skill was very inconsequential because my opponent was between, like, two, one, and two damage. Um, if your opponent's, like, gonna be taking the damage early on to conserve hand, or if they're going to be, you know guarding it early on so they can survive glory throwing in some crits into the mixture actually does shake things up a lot uh also considering the fact that your rear guards restand having a card that restands for 20 to 39 with an, with an extra crit is very is a lot more threatening than it restanding with some extra power that being said the power oh they'll just take it yes no exactly there's no th yeah there's no th um there's no threat also your opponent can just figure that out and comfortably take the attack for the fourth damage and i mean for the fifth damage and you know not worry about getting crits that being said i do run one front trigger just for the surprise also foil dolphin i thought it was because you couldn't find an eighth critical <laughs> yeah it was um for heals you know obviously and then for draw pg uh something i've considered doing because this is aqua force is dropping down the crits to six or dropping the front trigger completely and running five draw maybe do six crit six draw you could try that out i think it might be helpful but um typically i will see everything i want uh and then also uh, you know i pretty much only use excel one just because um power in this deck is super important and I've almost never been in a scenario where I'm like, damn, you I don't have hand. enough. Yeah, it's like, oh, shoot, I don't have enough. Because the way I play this deck is I play super um, conservatively uh, up until the turn I ride like glory. Then I, th yeah, then I go super liberal and I win. Um, no, uh, the point is that, like, you know, I conserve for glory. I don't play too aggressively throughout the game. Um, and, you know, again, crits help my more conservative play style too because i'm i can get two damage off of a vanguard attack instead of hoping for two damage off of a vanguard and a rear guard uh so this works for my play style um also really works with the meta right now like you know yeah actually the reason i shit ton of cards to guard all the uh, pretty much every game i won uh oh honey you don't guard murakumo pretty much every game i won at care expo was thanks to how this deck like the intentions that i built this deck around so uh it works for me you can tell me i'm wrong in the comments but whatever we won't listen. um I, and of course like you don't you know decide which which gift to run like just because i'm running excel one doesn't mean i run excel two i just always use excel one because it fits the deck a lot better um take riptide for example that's 32 which your opponent can guard with one card um but making it between like 42 and 52 when it's on an Excel marker makes things even harder. Uh, as opposed to making it like, like 47? Or no, as opposed to... 37, it, 40. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I was like, 47, what? No, uh, 37. Yeah, exactly. It's like, sure. Well, Rip, I guess Riptide's not the best example to use just because it, it's already a hard card to guard. But um, uh, using Excel markers helps basically everything in this deck. Like... A 29k Algos that's restanding is a lot more threatening than a 24. 24k Algos restanding. In a, a lame man's terms, I'm no longer baby. I want power. <laughs> yes, I do. I do want power. Um, no, but uh, obviously, because this is how it's designed, you would run... I, I shouldn't even say run. Um, depending on, like, the tempo of the game, sure, go into Excel 2 if you, like, need the hand or if you've fallen behind. But... Uh, like, maybe if you're in a match and you go second, um, you could try doing Excel 2 just to guarantee the defense because you...
this deck doesn't do great if you don't go first because you need to get to glory uh and a lot of glory's impact is being able to rush your opponent down at um grade two and i know you're saying miles you just said you play conservatively why are you talking about rushing and here's the play you got you got one damage whoop wow, and you have to specifically pick up the crit pg as a damage yes thank you and you have mm -hmm. um this okay Swing with Tidal Assault. It's the first battle, so you still bless one and re -stamp. That's 9k. Swing with Tidal Assault again. Swing with Algos. Use its skill. Restand. Swing again. So it's like that's four attacks. There are times where I put my opponent to five damage by this turn, by turn two, solely because they don't have anything. They they want to take the hits because they want to, um, they're, you know, people typically bank on a trigger. I'll do this too. Uh, you'll bank on a trigger to prevent... Because again, if, if if your opponent gets a trigger off of just this first swing, it's shut down. But you're calling one card, so it's really not big of a deal. Um, also, a lot of people just kind of assume you apparently don't have anything in your hand. So they'll almost always swing at the title assault the next turn. And like, that doesn't affect anything. They're not denying you damage. Denying you damage is like definitely something to take into consideration. But it hardly matters when we have a counter charge. We're already going to have a damage. And um, the following turn, we don't need the counter blast. It's when they go into glory that we need the one counter blast. And it's like, if they're not going to deal you damage, then that kind of just works in your favor. So counter blast denial just doesn't work in this case. Um, but like, okay, well, all I'm trying to say is that just off of this two card setup, you can get off four attacks. And if your opponent doesn't have a lot of hand or is banking on a trigger and doesn't see the trigger, um, they're going to get fucked. It's really funny when they don't see the trigger. Yes, I've again, okay, that's what I wanted to finish saying. I put my opponents to five damage by the time of Rin to grade two uh, just off of this combo because they bank on a trigger or they, you know, aren't able to guard or they do guard and they break through. Vanguard shit happens. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a good play. Um... But for the most part, you know, I don't, like, call full field and start swarming my opponent. So I think I've rambled enough. Uh, this was the deck profile. Um, again, if you want to scream at me for the things I've said in this video, you can do them in the but comments. But please but leave, please leave, leave one, a... one thread. Oh, yeah, that that's one thing. Please comment in one thread. It's really obnoxious. But anyway, no, what I wanted to say was at least leave a like. Thank you, and good night.